We're gonna use these five eighths by five and a half, six foot tall dog-eared cedar pickets. Traditional is going vertical. We're gonna make it go horizontal. Let's dive right in. We'll show you how to do it and all the steps that we use to make that happen. All right, so the first step of what we're gonna do, we gotta get these posts in the ground. And if you don't know what these are, these are postmaster posts. Normally you dig a hole and you pour some concrete and stab it in the ground. No, we're not gonna do that this time. We're gonna drive it with the Rhino Driver XA. It has the Postmaster adapter on it and it slides right over the Postmaster and that's how we're gonna be able to drive it. One of the big things to remember about when you're doing horizontal cedar fence, traditional cedar fence goes what? What's the post spacing? Eight foot on centers. Horizontal cedar fence, six foot. We wanna make sure we don't go past that six foot spot. You could use a tape measure or we could just throw a picket down and know that we need a post there and a post there. Now we have our on centers marked out of where our posts need to go. One other thing that we wanna do is we wanna know how many pickets tall we're gonna to be to be able to get that six foot mark. We don't wanna to have to go through and rip every single picket. So we wanna leave them all to their factory width, which is five and a half inches. Five and a half times 11, I think is 60 and a half inches. So that's how tall our post needs to be out of the ground. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure from the top of the post and we are going to mark 60 and a half. You're also gonna want just a little bit more if you're gonna have a gate. That gate does need to be able to swing and operate. So you're gonna want some additional clearance. I would say no more than two inches. So we'll keep that in mind when we're driving these posts. See how easy that is? Super easy. Even in a little bit of rocky ground. Now, if you're in really rocky ground, I wouldn't recommend driving. I would recommend digging and setting. So now we got our posts in the ground. We got them driv, driv, we got them drived. We got them driven. Okay, we drove the posts in the ground. So we're gonna take a two by four in that 60 and a half that we measured for our grade mark. We're gonna cut a two by four to the 60 and a half in length. And we're gonna rip it right in half. We don't have a table saw with us because it's on the job site, of course. So we're gonna rip one with a skill saw. These are rough cut two by four, so they measure just a little bit over than the typical two by four in thickness and width. So the thickness is one and three quarters. So what's gonna happen is each post is gonna get two of these. We're gonna screw them in from the back and these are now gonna be our nailers what screws and hardware we're gonna use on the cedar fence, everything is gonna be stainless steel. Why? Well, because cedar has something in it called tannic acid. And if you go and you see somebody putting up a brand new fence and like a month later, it's got those nice black streaks down it, it's because they didn't use stainless steel hardware. All of our screws are stainless steel and all of our nails are stainless steel as well. You know why we have horizontal cedar fence? Because of that one guy. That one guy that went out there and put up a brand new, beautiful, vertical cedar dog-eared picket fence. And the guy down the street, he was like, I like your fence, but I'm gonna do mine so much cooler and better. And that's why we have horizontal cedar fence. And it looks pretty dang cool. So we took one two by four and ripped it in half and cut it to 60 and a half inches in length. So this took one two by four this took one. Each one of these posts took one two by four. Is you wanna make sure and put the cuts towards each other. And make sure not to put the cuts out because then everything is nice and visible and you're gonna have that raw wood trying to keep the look nice and same. Same, 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 same. Also, in case if your cut's off just a little bit or if the board is just a little bit warped, then you can hide that on the inside because you're never gonna see it. Okay, so what we're gonna to use to fasten the pickets, the Magnum nail gun. So this is the one that we have found to grow and like. And these are the nails that we use. We use ring shank stainless steel nails. Why do we use ring shank? Well, because we don't use screws. Screws take a lot of time and you can have just as much of integrity in the ring shank as you do in the screws. 
the rings on the nail, grab that wood so that the nail doesn't work its way back out. So I'm deciding that I'm gonna go ahead and start from my top, and that's only because I sided my posts in off across the top of the post. So they're sided in, I have a nice top, and I know where my bottom is gonna end up. My bottom should end up right here at that black mark. All right, here we go. So I'm gonna match the top of this board with the top of my two by four. And we're just gonna go ahead and match them up on their ends. We ripped one more two by four. We cut up to 16 and a half. And this is another important step. So with these pickets, what's gonna happen is over time, they're gonna naturally wanna warp. So one might go this way, one might go that way. And we wanna try to control that as best we possibly can. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna nail this on the backside. We're gonna put that halfway in between the posts. So I'm gonna take a measurement and I got 66, so I'm gonna put it at 33. I'm gonna take my ripped side. And I'm gonna put that towards my, towards Andrew. He's gonna try really hard not to shoot me. Okay, I'm good on the bottom. Just got a quick hintful fact. You can't really see this without looking through the crack, but just take your tape measure and use it as a plumb bob. As long as your two by four on the back is straight, just follow your tape. Don't nail your tape, but straight line. So once you put the center stay on, what that's gonna do is that's gonna keep those pickets from warping and bowing all sorts of different directions. Since it's a wood product, what it wants to do whatever it naturally wants to do. So we're just trying to control it at a control point. Sometimes a helpful tip, you can hold a piece of wood like this and then nail down it so your exposed nail rings or nail holes are nice and straight. Point it out. So you could do the tape measure thing too, or you could take a piece of wood or you could take something with a straight edge Use that as a guide for your nailer. Okay, so now we just got done demonstrating how you build a five foot tall horizontal privacy fence with no air gap between the pickets. Now on this next section, we're gonna show you how to do that with a gap in between each picket. This section took 11 pickets. The next section, we're gonna use 10 pickets and we're gonna use a half inch air gap. Ironically, the math works out to the point where the thickness of the picket is exactly the gap that we're gonna to need to be able to make this work and still start at the same point and end at the same point. We're just gonna have a half inch gap in between each picket. Purely by luck. Purely by luck. Yes. We did not plan, I mean, we planned that out. That's what happened when you're a professional. <laughs> we're gonna use this piece as a spacer. It's the top of a picket. But we're gonna start from the top and we're gonna work our way down. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and nail on our stay. Uh, now I'll go to the bottom, same thing. Uh, oh, there's not there. So like we said, the math just so happened to work out on this that we were able to keep the post at the same height and run that gap in it. Make sure to pre-measure everything and do all your math before you get ready to build your fence to see how tall those posts need to be. A traditional cedar fence, your post is lower and your pickets are taller, but when you're going horizontal, that post needs to go all the way to the top. So whether you need a taller post, if you're gonna drive your post, don't forget that your posts need to go on the ground and you gotta drive X, uh, you know, X amount of post in the ground to compensate for that concrete, which here we drove three feet, actually two feet six. It's still, still rock solid. Andrew is complaining about how ugly the front looks. He says it doesn't look finished. I don't see the problem. Oh, we need to cover it up. We need to hide all the ugliness. That's what he's talking about. So what we did is we took a picket and we cut it down to what again? 60 and a half. Now we're not gonna go putting a whole bunch of nails in this because this is more of a trim piece to bring out the beauty. So we're gonna do it two at top, two in the middle, 
and two at the bottom. And that'll fasten that picket on there just fine. We had to hide all the stuff on the front side, but we still have a bare metal post on the back side. Even though it's a horizontal fence, we still need to hide that post because nobody wants to see that either. And that's the really cool thing about using a Postmaster post is you still get a metal post and you can 100% cover the thing up. So it's a beautiful brand new fence, but eh, nobody wants to see the post, right? That's what the picket's for. The only place that you can see it is right here, just a little bit. It's a far better product than a wood post, and it's gonna last exponentially a lot longer than a wood post. And if the wind blows really hard, it's not gonna break off like a wood post would. We just showed you how we build our horizontal cedar. This is a five foot example. No air gap, air gap. And we cannot stress enough the importance of using a Postmaster post. Make sure and see the video about why they're so important and why we love them right here. Dan with SWI, we are Wyoming's Fence Company and you have a good dang day.